After about a three-week voyage, our ship has finally arrived at the port of Acajutla in El Salvador. It's my first time to come to this place, but unfortunately, we had a problem with our machinery, so I had to stay on board for repairs. We're here right now in the port of Acajutla in El Salvador. As you can see, it is a relatively small port, but the interesting thing is it has a lot of ships of different types, all in one relatively small area. In this port, there is quite the variety of different ship types. There are oil and chemical tankers, which of course, as their names suggest, carries petroleum and many different types of liquid chemicals as cargo. Container vessels also call on this port, as we see here. Although, they don't have a massive facility for containers, so cargo operations here are a bit slower compared to ports with better infrastructure. They can also accommodate LNG, or liquefied natural gas carriers. And of course, bulk carriers, like our ship. Our cargo operation was scheduled for only three days, so there's some time for shore leave. And as I always do, I sent someone to go ashore to scout ahead, and also to buy some food for everyone. So we will be staying here for about three days to, you know, discharge the cargo of rice that we brought all the way from uh, the port of Rio Grande in Brazil. It's going to be a partial uh, discharging only because part of the cargo that we're carrying right now uh, is destined to go to Guatemala. That will be our next port. So once we get to Guatemala, we will fully discharge everything. However, as I mentioned earlier, we had a problem, or rather a few problems, that I had to deal with, so I had to stay on board. It was just one of those days wherein multiple unrelated problems happened on the same day. Unfortunately, due to the urgent nature of the problems, I wasn't able to take any videos of it, as I was busy at the time and had to be the one on the scene. The first one was with our air conditioning unit. We found a crack on the condenser casing itself, so all of the refrigerant has already leaked. We repaired it by welding, and once that was done, I was the one who had to purge and recharge the system because at the same time, one of the cargo cranes was not functioning, so the electrician had to go there himself. While both of those things were happening, we also got a call from the gangway watch because the gangway also malfunctioned. So I sent my other engineers to take care of it. Thankfully, we were able to repair everything. And by the time the food arrived, we were still sweating because the air conditioning was just switched on. So while we're here at port, I asked, I asked someone to buy something from outside. You know, some snacks. <laughs> Some people think I am strict and unapproachable, especially to my fellow Filipinos. Maybe it's the beard, or the way I speak, or maybe because some of my opinions are unpopular, which initially makes them think that I'm a snob or maybe treat my subordinates harshly. Well, they haven't met me yet. In truth, I treat my people fairly, but I will still enforce discipline. Those who know me can attest that I have always been a proponent for career advancement and crew welfare, and there have been times that I even argued with a few captains or even with the office management if there were lapses in crew welfare that were being ignored. 
It's just that for me, seafarers are already making a lot of sacrifices. So what's due for them, like decent food and accommodations, should never be taken for granted. That's why whenever there's an opportunity in port, I treat them to some snacks. And over the years, a lot of my subscribers have contributed to this end. Once again, thank you for all of the support. Eventually, our cargo operation was completed. And we left Acajutla and headed towards Puerto Quetzal in Guatemala, which was only a few hours away from our location. Upon arrival, we were instructed to drop anchor and wait for our turn to go into port. As it turned out, we will be waiting here for quite some time. So we had a lot of time to do more maintenance stuff, which our ship badly needed at that time. Keeping the deck clean and free of rust on board bulk carriers is quite tricky at times, due to the nature of their cargo, which almost always spills on deck and their cargo handling equipment, which oftentimes causes some form of damage. And if the voyages are short, the focus would be in cargo hold cleaning, not deck maintenance. So times like these, with good weather and long stays at anchor, provide the best opportunity for de-rusting and painting. Apparently, the anchorage area that we were in was an excellent fishing ground. So, of course, Whenever we get the chance to do so, that's almost every night, we go fishing. Time to set up the grill and enjoy the freshly caught fish for dinner. As I have always said, nothing beats freshly caught fish as compared to fish that has been in the freezer for God knows how long. Now, a long time at anchor can be either a good thing or a bad thing. It could become a bad thing if the ship's food and water supply are already depleted and resupply is not allowed by the local authorities. But in our case, it was a good thing since our food stock was recently replenished in Acajutla and our fresh water tanks were also full. Having a good fishing spot made things even better. So everyone was in high spirits, which made the days pass by rapidly. 